Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. We are speaking with Kenya's Chief Justice, Martha Kome. Um, I'd like us to now focus on the pace of trial, which is also something that you talked about when you were launching your vision, especially for high profile murder, high profile corruption cases. Um, and we know even for Common Mananchi, they spend years and years pacing up and down in the corridors seeking justice. Um, and we've seen uh, what happens. You have adjournments, you have you know, technicalities, you have all of these procedural motions, things that delay the cases. Um, let me give you an example. The Willy Kimani case that's been going on um, for five years. Willy Kimani, his, his driver and his client who were killed five years ago. Um, we've got other cases like Carrollton Minor since 2018. In fact, there's you know, word that the inquest file is missing. If you take a look at uh, the baby Samantha Pendo case as well, five years since that happened, an inquest found the police culpable, but we're still waiting to see what happens at the court of law. And um, at least in the case of Willy Kimani, we saw uh, the court responding to public pressure. Mm -hmm. um, but then some people say, how do we make this the norm rather than cases that are brought up in the media and that, you know, get the attention? And then we see the judiciary responding. How do we deal with prompt resolution of cases at the court? Indeed, that is what um, targeting. Uh, if you have read my vision, the key resort area is ensuring access to justice. In other words, transforming the society through access to justice. Uh, my vision starts from the two other blueprints by my predecessors, uh, transforming the judiciary by my predecessor, Dr. William Mutunga, and sustaining judicial transformation by Justice uh, David Maraga. So the trajectory I'm taking is that we cannot focus on transforming the judiciary alone. We also have to transform the society by ensuring access to justice and you know, really looking at the social context under which we operate, empowering Kenyans also to be guardians of the rule of law uh, in a way that they are aware of their rights, they can claim their rights, and they can access the court expeditiously. A judiciary that is responsive to the aspirations of Kenyans. No Kenyan wants to come to court year in, year out. Yet that is the case. Though. It is unacceptable. Yeah. Because when somebody has a case, because I've been a trial judge, I know how painful it is. And I've engaged with the people, including the court users committees. I know what it means for somebody to be given a date, come to court. Sometimes they have to sell their only possession to get transport, to come to court or hire a lawyer, or even find accommodation because they are traveling 175 kilometers to the nearest court. So my vision looks at accessing justice, first of all, by reducing the distance between the courts and where people are, so that we don't have to travel 100 kilometers, 170 kilometers, reduce it to at least 100. What we need to do to make sure that cases are decided within three years, first of all, we also have to look at the human resource register. Do we have the capacity to deal with the number of cases that we have? It has been identified there is a serious gap in terms of the human resource and the amount of work that there is in the judiciary. Indeed, we are 5,000 when we ought to be 9,000. So my vision looks at reducing that gap because we have a capacity gap of almost 45% of the human resource capital that we require. Then budgetary, you have mentioned it. When people keep on crying out for justice, then we have to give the judiciary money to be able to employ these people, to be able to build the courts. We need a high court in every county. We need magistrates courts in all the sub-counties. We need to roll out the small claims courts in all the sub-counties and um, even a smaller unit like, uh, uh, like a ward should have a small claims court because the jurisdiction of the small claims court and the time frame within a case should be completed in the small claims court is 60 days. And that will ease a lot of pressure 
from the magistrates and from the high court. So there's a co combination of things that we need to do, Yvonne, uh, so that justice can be accessible to people. But we cannot talk about this without establishing the judiciary fund. And I'm happy to report that one of the milestones that I'm talking about is that we've been given authority to establish the judiciary fund by the National Treasury. And we are working with the National Treasury and um, the, 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 the central bank and the judiciary team of experts uh, coming together to build a system that will enable us migrate from the government IFMIS so that we can have a judiciary IFMIS that is able to receive money, pay out money, receive deposits, receive also development fund, and a system that is credible. We've seen, like you said, uh, you've been fortunate to now have um, you know, the approval and working with the National Treasury to set up the Judicial Fund, is that we've seen quite a bit of impetus since you're coming into office um, on a number of things that seemed to really grind very slowly, in some cases almost to a halt with previous administrations at the helm of the judiciary. Um, and that brings me to the next one, uh, success with the Judicial Fund. Um, but then a few days after you took office, the president finally appointed uh, those judges, some of the 41 judges who had been approved by the JSC. Was this a coincidence that it happened so soon? after your appointment? My skill to negotiate, because when I was interviewed for this position, Yvonne, you remember I said I'm a problem solver. I believe in solving problems. After all, that's all I do as a judge, is to find solutions for every problem that is in front of you. And I think I've been on camera to say when I came in office, the first station I visited was Kisumu. And I was completely concerned about access to justice, which had ground to our oat. The Court of Appeal had closed for two years. And it's not only Kisumu, Mombasa, and Nyeri. Appeals were there, ready for hearing, but there are no judges. When you go to uh, Environment and Land Court, we had one judge traversing three or four counties to hear land and environment matters. I could see the frustration of Kenyans litigants waiting to be heard and there are no judges. We still have that problem in the High Court because we have to hire more judges. So when I came back, I said, why am I Chief Justice? Is to make things work. So I wrote to His Excellency, the President, I said, look, uh, I would like a meeting so that we can discuss generally the administration of justice because everybody gets bothered, even MPs. They are inundated by complaints by the litigants who are their constituents. My case is taking 20 years. My child was raped and they have been going to court for the last eight years. And, you know, it's a concern for all of us, litigants, Kenyans, people in positions it's like it is to you in the media. So um, when I wrote that letter, I was presently surprised to see a Gazette notice saying uh, uh, 34 will be, um, have been gazetted. Mm -hmm. And the next thing was swearing in. So I'm still urging, like I said, it was bittersweet. I expected the 40 of them to be sworn, but at least I could take the 34, 18 have gone to the Land and Environment Court. They have been sent to eight counties where we didn't even have judges. The other seven proceeded to the Court of Appeal, which really was very low in numbers. Yeah. Now we can at least mount, uh, you know, five or six benches to hear the appeal matters. We have a bench in Kisumu and another one in Mombasa. So um, when you get into a position of leadership, you find solutions for the problems that you find there, practical solutions. So the phone call that you promised during the vetting came in form of, of a letter to the president? Yes, that's the one I did because okay. I didn't know how to call. All right. Uh, I wrote a note. Okay. Yes. What of the remaining um, judges who have yet to be appointed? Um, they have a cloud of suspicion. There are some rather serious allegations that have been leveled against them by no less than, you know, a person of the stature of the presidency. Um, is this something then? Have you written another letter? Are you going to make a phone call? Because, Madam CJ, 
some of them are still sitting in court, still hearing cases. Some of the litigants might say, but why am I before somebody whom the president, no less, who probably has information, like he says, uh, from you know, security agencies and, and, and other sources, perhaps, that the ordinary Kenyan is not privy to. Do you at least know why they have not been appointed? Is this something that you have sought? Have you written another letter, perhaps this time picked up the phone to, to find out about the fate of these judges and basically the reason why? Why they have not been appointed? I've done a lot of that, uh, Yvonne, uh, because it's also a live matter which we cannot discuss. It's, it's, it's in court. Uh, but no information has been given to me why the six have not been uh, appointed. Uh, but of course, there is also an order injuncting any uh, processes on, on that. Uh, but for me, these are serving judges, yeah. they are in office. So what prejudice will be suffered if they are sworn in office to come to the Court of Appeal or the other two, one is serving as a senior uh, chief magistrate and the other one a registrar of the High Court. They are serving. So there is no prejudice that will be suffered. And in any event, if you have complaints against you, they can always be brought if you are serving judge. Yeah. It doesn't but, matter which court you are serving but, in. Madam CJ, from so a, for me, that's why I said this is bittersweet because yeah. I expected the 40 to be sworn yeah. and I'm still urging the other six to be sworn. What would you be willing to do um, if the president makes it clear to you that he has absolutely no intention of ever appointing them? What would you do then? Uh, as you know, I belong to the Judicial Service Commission that uh, did the nomination. The recommendations. Therefore, at that point, we became factors official because you forward the list to His Excellency for the appointment. He is the appointing authority. So, as far as we are concerned, we are factors official. Uh, but we are all concerned about the administration of justice. Uh, they are Don't they deserve their day in they, court they, they, or they, they you know, do the opportunity to, and indeed they are to in clear their name? They yeah. are indeed in court. Yeah. So we can't go into the nitty gritties about this matter because mm -hmm. it's still live in court. Mm -hmm. Yes, safe to say, look, um, the JSE did its work, did the list of nomination, forwarded, and now we are functors official. The rest of the process now is the court to determine. What we will do and must be done is to ensure that the names that you forward for nomination and appointment, there should be no issues about integrity or complaints. And those complaints must be brought to the table and dealt with them, the merits or the merits of them. There must be that understanding. And this problem didn't start today. I've been in the judiciary for 18 years. I've seen judges robe, go to the state house to be sworn and they are returned. I think you are aware of it. It's been happening back and forth. You so know. if you're saying that you should make sure that um, you know, all of the names that are passed by the JSC should not um, you know, have any issues, issues, would you then be implying that the ones who have yet to be appointed might have had issues and were passed erroneously I by the JSC? I cannot answer that question. As I told you, Yvonne, it's a matter which is alive in court. It's the court to determine. Okay. Um, let me just finish with um, giving you a moment to talk about uh, the Martha Kome that we knew who was introduced to us during you know, the second liberation, the activist, even this came up during your vetting, and how you now uh, manage and transition yourself. You've been 18 years at the helm of the judiciary, um, different now, I mean, 18 years at the judiciary, different now at the helm of it, um, and, and balancing all of these uh, things, uh, administration, jurisprudence, um, budgeting, for instance, which are, you know, things that are now within your ambit as the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya. So let's let's talk about that. Have we completely done away with the Martha Kome that we knew um, in, in the early 90s? Um, is this a completely different person? Uh, just talk to us about that and how that um, now influences what your leadership will be like. To the vision we have to ensure social transformation through access to justice is a vision that cannot be delivered by one person. I need everybody to work with me, to move with me, to own the vision. And how do they own it? It's to tell them, look, we all swore to defend the Constitution. 
to dispense justice without fear or favor or without any interference by anybody, because that is what is provided in the Constitution. To be efficient so that if I have a docket, mm -hmm. we are all lawyers. We all went to the university, got a postgraduate diploma mm -hmm. in law, practiced and they swore to uphold the Constitution. So if in my docket I have cases that are five years old, 10 years old, I must be asking myself, what am I doing to Kenyans? Why am I frustrating Kenyans? How can I actively manage these cases? And now we are working with, the, we have a legal researcher, we have a clerk, we have a registry. So the cases are being managed effectively and actively. Uh, to make sure that we dispense justice expeditiously. And the same standards I apply in the Supreme Court as a president of the court should be the same standards. The magistrate in the small claims court, in the Cadiz court, in the tribunal, in any court or even in the superior courts should be applying. Okay. That is the vision that I'm sharing with Kenyans, that we are using the same standards. In fact, we are moving towards what they call the ISO certification under my leadership. Okay, we will leave it at that. We thank you so much for your time speaking with us, uh, Madam Chief Justice. And uh, we look forward uh, to seeing the work that you do and hopefully speaking with you again sometime in the future as we continue to take a look at the work of dispensing justice to Kenyans. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Asante. Yes, thank Asante you. Sana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.